Damien glanced at the gentle-mannered guy attacking him, a mocking smile appearing on his face as he remarked that Gentle was even more foolish than he had initially thought. However, this lack of surprise was common for Damien because people who seemed important often turned out to be insignificant in the end. Once their skills were recognized, they would start showing off. Damien had wanted to avoid any confrontation with him while they waited, so he simply ignored him. But Damien knew deep down that the true colors of this guy would be revealed sooner or later, just as he had expected. As Jenna launched an attack at Damien, he shouted, Die! But Damien swiftly sidestepped, evading the attack. He then swiftly rotated his leg 180 degrees and struck Gentle on the shoulder. The blow was incredibly powerful, causing Gentle to cough in pain, which surprised his teammates. Gentle's three teammates simultaneously launched their attacks towards Damien, but he remained unfazed, standing there like a true man to take on their attacks. Damien counterattacked by reverse kicking Gentle sending him flying towards his own teammate's incoming attacks. Gentle's teammates exclaimed in shock and urged him to dodge the attacks. Gentle looked back at the incoming attacks but found himself unable to evade them while still in midair. The attacks landed on his back with a loud thud, causing him to cry out in pain. Gentle fell near Damien's feet, irritating Damien, who decided to finish him off with one decisive blow. He punched Gentle squarely in the face, and it was enough to incapacitate him. As Gentle's body disappeared, Damien visibly relaxed, muttering that it was finally over. A notification then popped up, indicating that Gentle Mannered Guy had left. More notifications followed, surprising Damien. The notifications read, Umju's husband has left, Roa Good has left, and Please Buy Me Chicken has left. All of Gentle's party members and other solo participants were disappearing, and Damien wondered what was happening as they were all fine just now. While Damien pondered, he heard a cry for help. As he turned back, he saw a girl desperately asking for assistance but a blade appeared in her chest, but before Damien could act, the blade abruptly ended her life right in front of his eyes. Damien was stunned and bewildered by what was happening. Another notification appeared, indicating that Luo Bong Bong had left. Damien noticed the masked woman named Gumwa standing over the lifeless body of the girl. It became clear to Damien that Gumwa was the one responsible for the disappearances and killings of the other users. Damien looked at her and realized that Gumwa had been behind all of it. Gumwa met Damien's gaze and inquired if he was the only one left. Damien confirmed that he was. His attention shifted to Gumwa's sashimi knife, and he couldn't help but be impressed. The knife was a rare, one-handed dagger with a plus nine enhancement and an exceptionally fast attack speed, making it a deadly weapon in the hands of a skilled individual. Its bonuses were equally impressive, providing a significant boost to both attack power and critical damage on normal and sneak attacks. Damien couldn't deny that it was an extraordinary weapon. Gumwa commented on Damien's lack of items, suggesting that he might be concealing something. Damien scoffed at the comment, reminding her that she was an overgeared noble, implying that she possessed an unfair advantage over others. As Damien picked up a sword dropped by another user from the ground, he thought that Gumwa might prove to be a formidable opponent, so he decided to take the sword just in case. Gumwa noticed this and questioned Damien about his intentions given that he wasn't a knight and probably had no experience wielding a sword. Damien looked at the sword and replied, stating that Gumwa was more talkative than he had expected, much like the guy from earlier. Gumwa didn't comprehend his remark and asked for clarification, but Damien remained silent. He calmly assessed the situation, fully aware that assassins were typically formidable in one-on-one -on -one battles. Gumwa's mastery of the sashimi knife confirmed that she was no exception. Nonetheless, Damien was determined to overcome this challenge. Firmly gripping his sword, he issued a warning to Gumwa, informing her that time was of the essence and commanding her to engage him. Gumwa, furious at his disrespect vowed to make Damien regret his words, Kesh harged forward with all her might alerting Damien, she jumps out and becomes a sore of Pokemon spinning in the air, utilizing her kunoichi skill called Tiger's Molar. Damien swiftly reacted blocking her attack with his sword. He was impressed by Gumwa's strength and skill, realizing that without his titles or equipment, 
he would have already met his demise. However, Damien refused to back down. He praised Gumwa's fighting spirit and pointed out that her arms were still too weak. Gumwa was taken aback, wondering how he managed to block one of her most strongest skills, Tiger's Molar. Determined to prove herself, she intensified her attack, shouting a question, What the hell are you? But Damien remained calm and focused, effortlessly pushing her back and issuing a provocative question of his own, I also wonder what I am. As Damien repelled Gumwa's advances, she resorted to another kunoichi skill called Mist Steps, vanishing and shrouding the area in purple mist. Damien stood within the mist, realizing that it was a stealth skill she had employed to eliminate the other participants. He scanned the surroundings, attempting to detect her presence as Gumwa's voice echoed from various directions, taunting him, telling him he can't do anything but just look around. Damien honed his senses, striving to locate her. He recognized that although the skill didn't render her completely undetectable, the moments of exposure were brief. Suddenly, he spotted her position at the top right, at a 45-degree angle, and began evading her attacks with unwavering focus. While skillfully dodging her strikes, Damien determined that it was time to gradually prepare for a counterattack. Gunwa grew increasingly irritated and insultingly referred to Damien as a rat-like bastard, questioning how long he believed he could continue dodging. However, before she could finish her sentence, Damien's fist connected with her, breaking an elixir bottle upon impact. Gunwa was taken aback by the shattered elixir and inquired about its nature. The force behind Damien's blow sent her hurtling backward, crashing into a wall. Damien answered her question, wearing a mocking smile, it was a skill, what else could it be? Gumwa experienced a sudden pain and glanced down, noticing her clothes beginning to dissolve due to the elixir Damien had employed. Embarrassed, she exclaimed, questioning what was happening to her. She called Damien a perverted bastard and demanded an explanation for his actions. However, as Gumwa looked up, Damien stood before her with his sword, cautioning her not to shout, or he would dispose of her mercilessly. He further threatened her proposing that if she surrendered everything she had, he would spare her from suffering. Gumla's expression transformed into fear as Damien approached her, brandishing his drawn sword. Gumla closed her eyes, terrified, only to hear Damien's voice reminding her to surrender everything. He initiated a countdown from ten, leaving Gumla with ten seconds to make a decision, leaving her no choice but to comply with his demands. Damien looked down with a creepy smile and examined the items that Gumwa had dropped before leaving the game hinting that they were pretty nice. Among them were many pieces of equipment that he knew belonged to a overdeared noble, making them much better than the usual loot from regular players. As he picked up Akunoichi's discreet garter belt, Damien couldn't help but wonder what it was used for. Before he could think more about it, an announcement interrupted him, signaling the start of the next test. He added it to his inventory and prepared to move on to the next challenge. The gate opened, and Damien wasted no time, swiftly moving forward, determined to complete the challenge as fast as possible. Damien faced his next opponents, the War Rats. He decided to deal with them quickly and efficiently. As he skillfully eliminated the War Rats, notifications kept popping up, informing him of his progress. Soon, he received the notification that he had defeated 10 War Rat Phantoms. The announcement sounded, indicating that Test Level 2 was complete, and Damien had earned 10 points. Test Level 3 was about to begin, with 9 minutes and 59 seconds remaining. Confidently, Damien approached the gate, declaring that he didn't need to wait and demanded to start the test right away. A notification popped up, asking if he wanted to skip the waiting period forever and Damien confirmed it without hesitation. He looked ahead, ready to face whatever challenges the next test had in store for him. Damien continued his journey through the test, easily defeating various monsters such as skeletons and two-headed creatures. As he defeated the red skin monsters and cleared the stage, the announcement sounded, signaling that test level 7 was complete and test level 8 was now open. With a determined mindset, Damien thought about who his next opponent would be. It didn't take long for him to realize that the lizard men would be his next challenge. One of the lizard men attacked him with an axe, but Damien remained unfazed. 
With a cold look in his eyes, he swung his weapon and killed the lizard man in one shot. As he continued to fight, Damien noticed that he could use other users' weapons with great proficiency. He remembered clearing Gladiator Mode, one of the challenge modes, before his regression. In Gladiator Mode, he had to complete a level using only the given equipment. Damien had earned the title of Grand Weapon Master for being the first to clear a hundred levels. The intense practice he underwent to master all those weapons had been ingrained in his memories, and he could still recall everything he had learned from it. Damien continued his battle, easily slaughtering the lizard men. Notifications kept popping up, announcing that he had defeated three, four, and then ten lizard man phantoms. Damien remained focused and determined, finishing off the last of them before saying next. As soon as he finished the last of the lizard men, the announcement sounded, signaling that test level 8 was complete and test level 9 was now open. Without hesitation, Damien started walking towards the gate for level 9, ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. At the Adventurer's Guild, Maria stood before a globe, observing the ongoing tests through it. Hats in, the manager of the Adventurer's Guild, approached her and asked about the testing ground situation. Maria replied, stating that not much was happening and that all the participants were newbies who didn't know what they were doing. Hatsan asked if there was anyone skilled enough to send immediately to the front lines, but Maria responded that there was no one who met the required standards. Hansan wondered if Maria's standards were too high, but she tells him that there are some people he could use as human shields although they won't last long on the front lines. Hatsan thought to himself, realizing that despite tens of thousands of people coming for a license, it was challenging to find someone the guild would want. At this rate, NPCs would be more useful than explorers. Maria acknowledged that the situation was better than in the earlier stages when people claimed to come from other worlds. Han San yawns and agrees with Maria but said he can't help but be disappointed anyway, however Maria tells him that they were still only selecting obedient battle machines, and she advised Hat San not to be too greedy in the selection process. Explorer guilds were known for their inclusive policies, accepting members from all backgrounds, regardless of their social status, past, or race. While this led to the formation of large guilds, it also meant that truly talented individuals were often recruited by prestigious institutions like the Royal Academy or the Magic Tower. As a result, many quests and jobs that required a high level of skill went unfinished. Hatsan took a lit up his cigarette and contemplated the situation. He realized they needed to start from scratch and train their members to tackle difficult quests. Taking in new members at the moment wouldn't be enough to address the backlog of quests. This meant they would have to work harder this month to ensure everything was completed on time. But then, Maria suddenly smiled and mentioned a unique case. Hatsan was intrigued since Maria the Black Rose was known to be strict and meticulous due to her many years of war mercenary experience. The individual in question must be truly exceptional if Maria was impressed. Hatsan asked Maria to elaborate on this unique case, eager to learn more. Maria's face twisted into an evil grin as she turned to Hatsan. She informed him that in the first level, nine people had died, leaving only one survivor to make his way through the subsequent levels alone. She asks him what he thought of it and whether it was pretty unique, Hatsan was surprised to hear this news. He commented that even an average adult man could handle goblins, and he found it hard to believe that nine people had died. He asked Maria if anyone had given up. Maria replied that nobody had given up. She went on to explain that the lone survivor was extremely fast, taking an average of just 2 minutes and 58 seconds to complete each level. This made him one of the top three contestants of the day and that the nine people were not killed by goblins. Hatsan was curious about the cause of the nine deaths. Maria's face lit up with excitement as she smiled at Hatsan. She proudly declared that nobody was allowed to interfere with the testing process except for herself. She then posed the question to Hatsan, Do you know what this means? Hatsan was taken aback by this revelation, and he wondered aloud, saying, Could it be? But he hesitated to finish his thought. However, Maria could tell he was onto something. Maria responded with an evil smile as she turned to look at Damien's image on the globe. She confirmed Hatson's suspicion, 
stating that Damien had potentially killed all the others in the first level and was currently making his way through level 9. Damien sat on the ground, covered in blood, and heard an announcement declaring the completion of test level 9. The system began calculating his test results, and Damien learned that he had earned 10 points. He then heard the announcement that test level 10 was opening. As he sat on the ground looking at the dead monsters, Damien couldn't help but notice something strange. The difficulty of the previous levels was higher than he expected, with orcs and dark elves replacing the slimes and skeleton mages from his past life's memories. Despite this, Damien remained determined to claim the rewards promised to him. He approached the last gate and confidently thought that level 10, the final stage, should be easy, remembering that the final boss might be a slime king, mud golem, or blood goblin. He even began to wonder what rank he might receive. However, his thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a loud sound. Damien jumped back in shock and looked ahead to see what was causing the commotion. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the Minotaur's phantom standing before him. The notification displayed the creature's information, revealing that it was a normal beast-type phantom created by the summon gate. Damien's gaze hardened as he surveyed the looming figure of the Minotaur. He couldn't help but think about the recklessness of those who thought they could just send adventurers like him to face such a monstrous beast. Nonetheless, Damien steeled himself for the coming fight. Damien's hand began to emanate a bright red glow thinking he had no choice but to think about it after he defeats the it, and he told the Minotaur, watch closely because I'm gonna be quick. The Minotaur looked at him with a puzzled expression, unsure of what was about to happen. The red flaming aura appears around his feet, and in a flash, Damien disappeared from his spot, leaving the Minotaur bewildered and searching frantically for him. The Minotaur scanned his surroundings, trying to find any trace of Damien's whereabouts. Suddenly, Damien reappeared from behind the Minotaur, catching him off guard. Damien taunted the beast, saying, Minotaurs are a bit too chewy when cooked normally, so you're gonna need to be marinated. Damien knew he had to act fast if he wanted to defeat the Minotaur, so he used the decay elixir skill and hurled the elixirs at the Minotaur's head and body, causing the beast to let out a painful scream. A notification appeared, indicating that the Minotaur Phantom's defense power had decreased. As Damien landed on the ground, he saw the Minotaur covering its eyes and took the chance to dash towards it to attack it, but the Minotaur was able to regain its composure. But the beast's anger was apparent as it launched a punch at Damien. In a split second, Damien jumped to the nearby wall, narrowly avoiding the attack. Using the wall as leverage, he rebounded back and straight up bitch slapped the Minotaur's head. With a smile on his face, Damien taunted the beast, saying, You're just beef, you cow head. The Minotaur cried out in pain as he fell to the ground, writhing in agony. He looked up and saw Damien charging towards him with fierce determination in his eyes. The Minotaur quickly crossed his arms to block Damien's attack. As he blocked, a notification popped up, indicating that the Minotaur's phantom had fallen into an overdose state. The Minotaur begins to back away but Damien attempted to blow a dart at the Minotaur, but the Minotaur senses the attack and manages to counterattack by slamming the ground with its hand, sending a shockwave towards Damien causing him to quickly back up and dodge the blow. Damien was amused to see rocks being thrown at him. Enraged, the Minotaur let out a loud moo in anger and started hurling rocks at Damien. Damien swiftly dodged the Minotaur's attacks taunting him by calling him a crazy cow head and remarking that there was no way he would fall for the Minotaur's slow attacks. Despite the dangerous situation, Damien couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement coursing through his veins. He tried to understand what was happening to him. Even though it was a life-or-death situation, his blood was boiling. He realized that his heart was beating fast and he felt a sense of joy because of his fighting spirit. With a smile on his face, Damien turned to face the Minotaur and said, Let's see how tough you've become. The Minotaur threw a powerful punch, but Damien was too quick. He dodged the attack and managed to injure the Minotaur's arm in the process. Jumping upward, Damien taunted the Minotaur by asking if he was still holding up well. He focused his attention, trying to find the Minotaur's weakness, knowing that he had to strike quickly. 
he soon discovered the weak spot and swiftly attacked the Minotaur's vulnerable area with his sword and dagger, making a cross motion. As he did so, notifications began to pop up. The first notification indicated that it was a critical hit. The next one revealed that the Minotaur's phantom had fallen into a state of bleeding. Finally, the last notification appeared, stating that the Minotaur's phantom had fallen into a state of near death. After landing back on the ground, Damien wondered if the battle was finally over. His doubts were soon cleared as another notification appeared, informing him that he had defeated the Minotaur's phantom. Damien stood still, hearing the announcement that test level 10 was complete and that he had earned 10 points. He hadn't expected to face such a monstrous creature, but it wasn't as challenging as he initially thought. He realized that he had grown significantly since he started, and he couldn't even tell what level he was now. Damien was amazed by his progress and reminded himself that he had to keep moving forward. Suddenly, the announcement interrupted his thoughts, declaring that Damien's total score was a hundred points and that the test. Damien stored his weapon in his inventory and started walking towards the exit. He walked over to Hatson's desk, and the guild workers looked at him in shock. He greeted Hatsan, stating that he had arrived. Hatsan responded, acknowledging Damien's presence and commenting on how the test must have been quite the experience. Damien replied that it wasn't easy. As Hatsan looked at Damien, he couldn't help but recall Damien's impressive test results. Damien had cleared the summon gate in record time and ranked first in general combat skills, situational judgment, and execution of actions. Additionally, he had defeated all his fellow test participants, which made him a popular topic among the employees. Hatsan understood why Maria had called him a unique case. Hatsan remembered Maria's insistence on scouting Damien, stating that skilled individuals like him were rare, and he was exactly what she wanted. Hatsan couldn't deny that Damien's test results were impressive, but he expressed concern about making a decision like that so quickly. Hansen tells Damien that his test results were impressive, but the killing of teammates bothered him a bit. Damien stated that he was good at judging people and he was sure that the other participants were all bad. He clarified that killing people wasn't a habit of his. Hatsan chuckled and commented that Damien sounded like a psycho, to which Damien didn't know how to respond. As Hatsan and Damien talked, Damien couldn't help but think that his excuse for killing the other test participants wasn't random. It was because he had played the game for so long that he could easily understand what other people were thinking. Damien knew that if Hatsan still refused to accept him, he would have to say goodbye to the license. Hatsan then addressed Damien, saying that he didn't seem like someone who would cause trouble for them, but he couldn't act the way he did during the test from now on. Hatsan emphasized that a guild member's blade should be facing a monster, not a human. Damien assured Hatsan that he was aware of that. Hatsan then asked Damien one final question, inquiring if he would take the license and work as an adventurer guild mercenary. Damien answered enthusiastically, saying that it would be an honor to work with the adventurer guild. A smile grew on Hatsan's face because of Damien's answer. Hatsan and Damien shook hands and Hatsan officially welcomed Damien to the Adventurer Guild. Hatsan expressed his excitement about working with Damien, and Damien couldn't wait to start his new adventure as part of the Adventurer Guild. Damien sat down in a nearby sitting area to relax when he received notifications. The first notification indicated that he had obtained an Adventurer license, and the second notification informed him that his affiliation had been changed to Adventurer Guild. Damien felt relieved and looked at his new adventurer license, which was gold 5 tier, feeling proud of his accomplishment. He thought to himself that now he could take quests and receive news from all over the continent. After a while, Damien received another notification that informed him he had earned the title record time clear. He felt a sense of accomplishment, realizing that he had obtained a new title without any difficulty. The title record time clear was given to the person who cleared the summon gate test provided by the Adventurer Guild the fastest. This title was awarded to only one person and came with a few perks, including a 3% increase in attack and movement speed. The title also had a unique trait that read, This man is very fast. Hatsan noticed Damien's expressions and asked if Damien liked his rank. 
Damien replied with a smile, confirming that he certainly did. Hatsan sighed and thought to himself that Damien's gold tier license was unprecedented and was only given to those who had accomplished various difficult quests or passed Maria's challenging promotion test. Hatsan approached Damien and explained that gold tier licenses were awarded to those worth 10 iron tiers and 3 silver tiers, and Damien would be able to accept high ranking quests as well. Hatsan showed Damien three missions to choose from, all of which were gold tier quests. Damien looked at them and saw that they included the exploration of the deep waterway beneath the royal palace and Drake's breath cultivation. However, the last mission caught his attention, and he asked Hatsan about it. Hatsan looked at the mission and informed Damien that it was about a village where sheep had been disappearing. The village was called Corneal, and the government had sent the mission. Since the village was located in the middle of nowhere, the government didn't want to send their precious knights for this task. Damien asked Hatsan if they thought it would be better to solve the problem by hiring adventurers with money. Hatsan agreed and added that, from what he had heard, the sheep kept disappearing, and he assumed it was a pack of wolves that had moved into the area. Hatsan also mentioned that the government wanted the problem solved at its root. Damien asked if he could do whatever he wanted to solve the problem, to which Hatsan replied that he could pretty much do so. Damien thought that these kinds of quests were usually not a lot of work and suspected that someone else in the village was stealing the sheep. He figured it probably wouldn't be a problem if he took care of the issue himself and made up a reasonable cause for the report. Hatsan interrupted Damien's thoughts and reminded him that he could do whatever he wanted as long as he brought forth results that satisfied both the village and the government. He asked Damien if he was willing to take on the quest, and Damien replied that it didn't sound bad and that he would do it. Damien received the quest notifications, asking him if he was willing to accept the quest, and without any delay, Damien accepted the quest. Excited about the fact that it was a gold-tier mission, Damien thought to himself that he was up for the challenge. As he started leaving the guild, he told Hatsan that he would be back, and in reply, Hatsan wished him good luck. Damien looked back with a smile and said he would see him soon as he set off on his quest. 